Hey, what's up guys? Alan with Sonic Electronics and today's Q&A is gonna be a little bit different. As you can see, you may recognize this area from some of our other videos. This is our bench where we dyno our amplifiers. And the reason why we're here is because today we have a question about an amplifier. And this question is from Miles from YouTube. He says, hey guys, just wanted to thank you for your videos. Um, you've helped out a lot. And his question is, is that I just installed a new JBL GXA 604 uh, four channel amplifier. Uh, when my car's in standby, the amplifier works perfectly. However, when I start my car, the amplifier within a few seconds goes into protection. Could this be a problem with my fuse, my battery? I have, all I have is four speakers connected to the amplifier. I also have a stock radio, so the amplifier is connected through a line out converter. Thanks, Miles. Uh, for, for some of you out there, some of this actually might be just really simple. And for some of you, this actually might be very helpful. So we're gonna kind of go over a few, uh, you know, troubleshooting tips that could help you out with maybe solving your problem. So we're gonna start out. We have our kicker, uh, KX800.1 hooked up here on our bench. I've got a digital multimeter like we've talked about in many of our other videos. I don't care if you don't think you need one, go buy one, you have to have one. Of course, we have our oscilloscope, which we're not using that for this video, but uh, anyways, so we have our amplifier here. It's hooked up. We've got an RCA connection. It is an aftermarket radio. It's powered up on the bench. And as one thing that you can check if you have a multimeter miles is you can turn your meter to DC voltage. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do, and I'm assuming what you meant by standby was your car's in the accessory position because you said everything works in standby. But when you start the car, it goes into protection. So the issue is when you start the car. So the first thing I would check is I'd take my meter and I'd come right over to my amplifier with the car in the accessory position where everything's working and I would probe the power and ground. We have 14.4 volts as you can see on our bench. So we want to make sure that you're within an operating range of power for your amplifier. Most amplifiers typically work or will fire up uh, anywhere from 11 to 15 volts typically. Um, and of course, you'll want to make sure that uh, you've got a good remote turn on from your aftermarket head unit uh, or trigger module or accessory, wherever you tied into. As you can see here, I've got 13.7, so I'm good. So what I would do after that is I would start the car and I would take a measurement of doing the exact same thing. What I think you're going to find is you're either going to have an issue where you've dropped voltage or you have got too much voltage. Now some cars, the uh, I've seen where the voltage regulator goes out and that just basically regulates how much power is going to the electronic components, how much it's charging the battery, etc. So if you'll see, you start at the car and you've got like 16 volts or more, which I've seen that happen, the amplifier will actually go into protection to protect itself from burning up. So that's one scenario, but you'll be able to find that out with your meter by making a quick measurement with the car started. Another thing, like I said, it could be is that you could have dropped power. Now this is where your fuse might come into play. So I have seen many times where customers come in, they say their amplifier doesn't work and we go to check and the fuse is loose. So maybe when you're starting the car, as the car is idling, maybe you don't have a really good connection at your fuse, I've seen that before. And then maybe you're dropping voltage. So you might find you only have like eight volts or six volts at the amplifier. And they, of course the amplifier is not gonna be able to fully turn on, on, but it may look like it's on and just be in protect. So that's one thing that you can check. Now let's take a look at some other things that can actually help you with troubleshooting your amplifier. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is actually disconnect all your speaker leads off the amplifier. This is the next step. We wanna see if there's anything related to an issue that might be causing the amplifier to go into protect from the speakers, either by a blown speaker um, or subwoofer or a shorted speaker wire that might be running through the car. Now I just want to take this little jumper right here and simulate a short for you. I'm basically going to jump this across and as you can see the light went off and our protect light turned on. Now I'm going to go ahead and disconnect my short. Now as you can see on this particular amplifier, this amplifier just went ahead and pulled itself out of protection when it saw that the short disappeared. Now other amplifiers that are on the market may not do that. So what you're gonna have to do 
is you're actually gonna have to power cycle the amplifier down. And that can be done by just turning the key off or turning your radio off and then turning it back on. All you're basically doing is killing the trigger of the remote wire to turn off the amplifier and then turn it back on. Once it turns back on, then you can see if that short is still there or not. This may require multiple key cycles to see if your problem has gone away. But what we wanna emphasize here is taking your meter once the speakers are disconnected and we wanna check the impedance of the speakers. In this particular case, this speaker is a four ohm speaker. So we're gonna connect our two wires here. And as you can see in our digital multimeter, we have 3.5 ohms. Most speakers typically are usually, don't have to be four ohms right on the money. They can, they can fluctuate, it can be 3.5, 3.8, 4.2, that's okay. What you're gonna wanna look out for is you're gonna wanna look out for a really weird uh, erratic impedance where it's just all over the place. Um, but we also wanna check for shorts. We definitely wanna make sure that when we measure for impedance that we have the correct impedance of the speaker that we know that we're using, either the factory speakers or our aftermarket. But the second thing we wanna check for is any shorts to ground. And what I mean by that is, obviously I'm not in a car here, but this speaker wire that's at your amplifier is running through your car, through your door, or wherever your speaker is. If this speaker wire becomes compromised at any time and shorted out, this short would be a short to ground and would cause this amplifier to go into protect. An easy way to check that is by putting the multimeter on continuity. And what that's gonna do here, in most meters typically when, you have, uh, on, when you're on continuity, you'll get a beep, and that basically indicates that you've completed the circuit. So, beep, when that beeps, we have a complete circuit. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to probe our negative terminal on our amplifier, or you can probe the ground in the car. You can just put it on a, a good grounding point uh, or on the amplifier, because you know your amp is grounded to the chassis. And then we can take our wire of our speaker and we can probe each wire. And as you can see, we have a short to ground on this speaker. And like I said earlier, that could be from the uh, wire running through the car being compromised and shorted at any given point. So what I'm getting at here is that you don't necessarily have a bad amplifier. There could be other components going on in the car that, be, that can be causing the issue such as uh, a power issue, a speaker issue, or lastly you can actually have an RCA issue where an RCA can be shorted and you're shorting the input of the amplifier which would also possibly cause it to go into protection depending on the amplifier's uh, protection circuitry. So another thing that you can do, and I heavily stress that you gotta have a multimeter to check this properly, you can also do what I like to just call a process of elimination. And basically, you can disconnect each speaker or woofer at a time. And you, like I said earlier, you may have to cycle the key to cycle the amplifier to get it out of protect. But if you wanna disconnect like your front right speaker, turn the key off, turn it back on, your amplifier should turn back on. If it's still in protection, move on to the next speaker, and if you, whatever speaker you get to, and you turn it back on, and all of a sudden it's not in protect, you know you may have an issue with that, that run of that cable going to either that speaker, or the speaker's blown, uh, or you have a short somewhere. Um, same thing with the RCA. If you've gotten to all the speakers and all the speakers test out fine and there's no shorts and you've cycled the amplifier on and off a few times and it's still in protection and you've unplugged the RCA and the RCA appeared to test fine and it's still in protection, the last thing it pretty much can be is that your amp is defective. So sometimes amplifiers go bad, they're just electronics. It's hard to say exactly what it is internally in the amplifier that goes bad without taking it apart. But those are just some simple steps that really don't take that long to actually narrow down a possible issue that you have either with the amplifier or other components in the vehicle. Well, Miles, hopefully that helped you in either solving or fixing your problem. Sometimes an amplifier is not always bad. Sometimes just simple things get overlooked that can create a problem. But make sure to subscribe. I'm just gonna go right there. Right. But make sure to subscribe to our Facebook, our YouTube, our Instagram, our Twitter, and thank you guys for watching and make sure you keep on submitting those questions so we can answer your questions. We'll see you next time.